I grew up on the north side of Houston, Texas. So my story starts with pretty much my mother dying at about five years old, I would say. I would start there. And I mean, I, I guess as you can imagine, any kid growing up without a mother at five years old, you're missing a piece of you, I guess. And this ain't no sympathy or no sad song because, you know, God uses a mess and turns it to a message. So I guess growing up at five years old, my dad, he was on drugs and alcohol. At that time, he wasn't fit to be a father figure. So growing up on the north side of Houston, actually off of Cross Timbers and 45 or Cross Timbers and Fulton. Back in the 90s, that was a pretty rough neighborhood. You pretty much got to prove yourselves. At this time, we were poorer than all the rest of the kids. So me and my brother, I guess we hit a point where we just got tired of being poor, man, and getting laughed at and talked about. So I guess we found a quick way seeing all the other guys, the older guys around us coming to school, telling us about the selling drug story and wearing nice clothes and driving nice cars at that time. So I mean, me and my brother got interested. I mean, we would have took a chance or whatever at that time. So we started selling a little bit of weed and making a little bit of money. So we kind of started dibbling and dabbling with the gangs, mainly my brother. I was more into the money and the selling drugs part, but when you're selling drugs, I mean, you have a lot of competition out there. So there comes with a lot of envy and a lot of jealousy of that. So there's fights, shootouts. We started packing guns. I mean, and then my buddy ended up getting killed. He got shot and killed one night when him and my brother were just riding around the neighborhood. I had just left them. And my brother and my uncle were getting into it. And I think they had a knife to each other's throat. So the laws were called and I was on probation. The laws were actually called on my brother. So I told him he needed to leave because the cops were coming. But he told me he was kind of under the influence, well under the influence, should I say. And he told me he ain't going nowhere. So I had two options. I could either leave him there and go about my business so I didn't get in trouble or I could avoid it or stay there. So me and my brother, we were like twins. Like I said, we were 11 months apart growing up in poverty. So man, I stayed there with them. I made that decision to stay with them. So the laws came and they came maybe five or six units deep. So when the officers got there, I had them, all they had to do, I had them retained. All they had to do was put handcuffs on them. But I guess they knew how tight me and him were. So the officer hit me. So I hit him back and caught me an assault charge. And I guess it's was just a roller coaster ride since then at 17 years old. I ended up in Harris County Jail. And while I was sitting there, this, this gentleman came next to him and he told me, hey man, I don't know you from the man on the moon. He said, but hey, whatever you're going through, the Lord told me to tell you that it's gonna be all right. So at this time, I'm fighting a charge, I'm kind of beat up from the officers when they did get me in handcuffs. They kind of handled me pretty rough. So I guess I wasn't trying to hear that. And I guess a small seed was planted in me that day when that guy told me that. So when I got up to my, when they booked me and sent me up to the tank I was going to, I picked up a Bible. And I picked up that Bible at 17 years old, man, and I sat inside that cell. And there was a lot of fighting going on. In between me reading the Bible and fighting and trying to defend myself. And I mean, there was a lot going on at that time. But something was drawing me and something was pulling me. So at 17, make a long story short, I ended up getting a five-year sentence for the drug charge that I was on probation for and the assault on a public servant. Everybody has a gift. I guess I can say that my gift was the Lord kind of gave me a real good memorization when it came to scripture. I started memorizing scripture. But I also know too that there's a real big difference between knowing of God and actually knowing and have that personal relationship with God. So I ended up coming home on that five year sentence and I went right back out. A few of these members at the church that do know me and have known me for some time, I think they kind of seen the battle of me going up and down. And even though maybe I was not deliberately trying to pull the wool over their eyes, but the fire that I had with the word, I think it was still a zealous like of the law, it was religious. God resists the proud, man, and that's what I was. I was a proud, arrogant, and I thought I was righteous, just like Paul did. So I made another trip to prison. When I came home, that religious stuff fell off of me, and then I was worse than I was before. Like the Bible says, the demons go get seven spirits worse. And they come to me, and I guess I had to surpass the first time I went to prison just to have any satisfaction to the flesh. I was more violent and more angry than I've ever been. Like. I mean, I can sit here and go on and on. Like me giving my testimony, it's, it's actually hard because there's so many details in my life of being an angry man, of being a violent man. And anybody in my family, 
you know, or who has known me at that time can vouch for it. I mean, and, I'm, and that's not nothing I'm proud of. But I ended up back in prison again on a retaliation on a police officer and another drug charge. And this time when I went to prison, I was lukewarm. I was in the middle. The first time I was just religious. I do believe that what the Lord starts in you, he will finish. So at that time, there was a there was a knocking on my door, man, and, and the, the door of my heart that was just getting louder. And I started kind of questioning myself. Like I knew a seed had been planted that was burning up on the inside of me. I really didn't understand what was going on. I knew that I was in the fire. So I came home, I started selling drugs again. I, I'm not gonna say I'm just super bad guy, but I was a bad guy. I mean, I lived in darkness. I packed guns all the time. I fought, if you looked at me wrong, I fought because drugs and alcohol had took over, man. And I, the Bible says that don't give the devil no place. I mean, and when I went to prison, I became a blood. I became a gang member. I was attending church. I mean, I would bring people to church. I would even be high and under the influence trying to witness to people, you know, and thought I was doing the work of the Lord. So the last trip I went, I went back down to prison on an evading arrest. So when I got to Montgomery County, I mean, I got into a couple fights real quick. I started getting into it with the officers real quick. I ended up in Super Seg. There's only four of them in the whole Montgomery County Jail. I mean, I was practically losing my mind. So that same word that I was using outwardly, it started cutting on me inwardly. And I only found myself wrestling with God. And I felt in my spirit where God told me the truth will set you free. And I felt somewhere deep in my spirit like, man, you've been faking and shaking all these years. When are you finally going to get real with me? And as that spirit started coming up inside of me, man, the fear of God and the respect of God and the reverence of God, it just had me crying out. And I talked to God like I've never talked to him before. But you know what? He probably answered me more speedily in that prayer because he told me, you know what? That's what I've been waiting on for all these years. And I wish my wife could be here giving part of this testimony because she can vouch and probably speak to you about the monster that I really was. But you know what? I've, I've tasted the grace of God through that woman. As I went to prison this time, I got a 40 year sentence for an evading arrest. And you know, I went down there in that 40 year sentence and I didn't know how much of that time I was gonna do. And I started getting real with God and, and I ended up ministering down there to the medium custody. God started working on my heart. He started allowing me to be a light in the darkest place. Like he said, he called us to be a light in a dark and perverse generation, man. And when God breaks that heart and God changes you, I mean, like the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5, that love, that joy, that peace that just comes upon you, man. It's not even words like Paul said when he had the revelation. He said, it's in words that can't even be uttered. I mean, and you can ask my wife. I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I'm not perfect. I still argue with my wife. I mean, sometimes I still come from home from work and I'm not in a good mood. But man, even them guys at work, one told me today, like, man, how does this dude stay so happy? And I said, it's not happy, it's joy, because the joy of the Lord is my strength. And when the Holy Spirit comes inside of you, man, it really takes a dark person and brings them into this marvelous light. And it's just the grace of Jesus, like, hey, let me get this straight. I'm not here even to tell you about John Lee. This is just my story for his glory but this is the testimony that he has given me so i'm just here to tell you what the grace of god to do what jesus to do when he touch your heart he'll give you a whole another purpose he'll give you a whole another mission in life you know and the lord to give you that joy and it's really a blessing to be here in these last days to be able to serve christ and be able to witness because the darker it gets the brighter the light shines so i mean it's a privilege in these last days for us to be able to go out and be a fisherman and, and to feed these sheep. And I'm glad. A dude told me today, man, Lee, I, man, I believe. But what happens if I still do bad stuff? I said, bro, well, you're still human. Just don't try to make an excuse out of it. Don't call good evil and don't call evil good. God wants you to be real. If you make a mistake, repent. Get back up. I mean, but don't make a lifestyle of it and then make God be all right with it. Because instead of letting God create us who he created us to be, sometimes we'll turn around and try to create our own God, which is idolatry. Like if you fall and you slip, just get up, repent. God will turn a mess into a message. God will turn a menace into a minister. And God will turn your test into a testimony, man. God bless y'all and I love y'all.